Hi guys, DevonTurksYZ, and I gotta say a lot of recent things have been happening with Sony. Uh, you know, lately we've been having those rumors about the new PlayStation Neo being released now in September. Whether or not it's true, I can't really say, and whether or not the so-called videos and stuff we've been seeing, you know, about the PlayStation 4 Slim, I'm not sure if they're even real or not. I mean, it's still kind of debatable. And of course, we've got news about PlayStation Plus costs being increased, you know, from... You know, instead of fifty dollars for the entire year would be sixty dollars, which I guess in hindsight it's not really as pricey, but considering there's like hundreds of thousands of PlayStation Plus users, that's like a big chunk of change that Sony's gonna get. But uh, in this video, I'm really gonna do a somewhat of a quick step-by-step -step guide on how to initiate the two-step verification. It's a new added security that PlayStation Network has enabled, and I really kind of highly recommend it. You know. I mean, better safe than sorry, right? You know, better take the time to enable it now than having to spend hours on the phone talking with Sony about how your account got hacked or whatever. And I got to say, it's kind of long overdue to have added security. I mean, ever since the whole network outage that happened back in uh, 2011, uh, I mean, I kind of thought something like better security was going to uh, pop up shortly after the, the incident. But I mean, that's like another five years after that. <laughs> But I guess better late than never. Uh, so anyway, this is going to be a quick step-by-step -step guide. Uh, I am going to be blocking out some things. I'm, you know, I'm not going to show like my my personal information. So some things are going to be blocked out. But yeah, this is just going to be a quick uh, little overview of how to initiate it. Well, to give you a heads up, uh, the two-step verification is only available for the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation app. Uh, if you want to have added security for your older systems, they have a different way of adding it, and we're going to get to that in a little bit. Uh, there are two ways you can initiate it. You can go on your PlayStation 4, but I say you'd be better off going onto the website itself. Uh, it'd be a little bit easier, and also it's pretty much necessary for the older systems. But again, we'll get to that in a little bit. So first of all, just head over to the PlayStation website, and once you're there, just go to your Manage Your PSN account. And once you sign in, you will get into your account management page, which looks roughly like this. And here you can view any active devices that you have, the amount of money in your wallet, which I am currently blocking out, any active downloads. But from here, what you need to go to is on the top with the tabs, you need to click on account. And once you click on your account settings, you want to find the security settings on the side tab. And once you're in there, you're going to scroll down until you see a message on the bottom that says, for two-step verification, please visit this page. And I believe the forum on the PlayStation site says something a little bit different, so it might be a little bit confusing, but uh, this is how it is right now. I mean, you find a little message, click on it, and it will take you to a completely different page where, again, you will have to sign in. Okay, once you sign into the two-step verification page, I believe initially you're only going to see the status and the mobile phone settings, so the device password and the backup codes. You probably won't see those until after you activate the verification. But for right now, what you need to do first is you need to have an active mobile phone number. And so you want to click on that tab first. And the whole reason why you need the phone is because of the whole two-step verification. You, know, you do your traditional sign-in as usual, but then Sony will text you a code and then you had to input that code into the sign-in page whenever you sign in on your PlayStation 4 or the PlayStation app. And when you're in your mobile phone settings, essentially all you need to do is just click on the add a mobile phone and you actually input your active phone number. Uh, of course, I have mine blocked out. But like it says on the bottom, if you want to change your mobile phone, you'll have to deactivate the two-step first and then you have to reactivate it and then use a, a different phone number. And after you input your phone number, you will get sent back to the main two-step verification page. And from there, you want to click on the status tab and just follow the on-screen instructions to activate the two-step verification. It's pretty straightforward and it will actually give you a, a quick summary as to how it works. Okay, this step right here is optional, but if you do have the two-step verification active and if you are planning on using any of your old devices, you know, your PSP, PS Vita, or PS3, then you will have to authorize the device setup password. And essentially what this does is, well, traditionally when you sign in, 
you always input your email and then your um, your password. But with the device setup password, Sony will give you a randomly generated password that you use whenever you sign in, and it's supposed to link your account with that specific device. So I'm not 100 percent sure on this, but I guess in case even if someone has your information, they will also need to have your console in order to actually access your account. You know, otherwise, I think if you try to access it on a different console. Uh, I, I guess it would give you an, a, an error message. Uh, first of all, you can't activate the device setup password in, in any of your devices. You have to initialize it on the website itself. So, which, uh, like I said, it'd be better off if you did all this on the website than on your, your console. Uh, well, when you're on your two step verification page, you want to go on to the device setup password. Uh, from there, you want to click on the, the button on the bottom that says generate new password. And you'll be giving a uh, a long-winded password. Unfortunately, it's pretty long. And what you want to do is you want to go on one of your devices and sign in, and you input your email as usual. But again, instead of using your password, you will use the generated password that Sony gives you, and you should be able to log in. And after that, you can continue to use your your current password if you want. But just keep in mind you have to use that device setup password every time you want to sign in into the main account. You know, you do your main sign in. So just keep that in mind. And uh, once you have that active, if you come back to this page, you will see you have a code on here that says uh, on device, and it will give you a timestamp to let you know that it has been active. You know, one of your codes have been active. And you can choose to revoke the password if you want, meaning you can get rid of it. But if you do have the two-step verification active, then you'll still need to have a device setup password. Uh, I guess the option to revoke is just in case you want a new one, or if you if you did forget what your current uh, device password is. Well, a couple of things to note as well is you have to do the passwords for each device that you own. You can't use the same password for all of your devices, but you can have multiple passwords on a single device if you want, although it's not really recommended. Well, for backup codes, which is the last option in the two sub verification page, uh, these are 10 codes that are given to you for you know backups in case you ever lose your phone and you can't receive any texts whenever you're trying to sign in. Uh, so instead of using the text codes that Sony gives you, or if you can't even access them, you can use a backup code. Just remember these are one time use only, so once you use them, it's gone. And I'm not sure if you get any more after you use these initial 10. Uh, you might have to call Sony, I don't really know. But uh, when you're in this little page for the backup codes, just write them down or print them out. Just make sure not to let anyone else see them as they can use them to access your account. Well, I hope this little guide helps you out into initializing the two-step verification. And, you know, we always want to have a secure account. You know, we don't want to be the target of, of a future hack. You know, I mean, I've read some stories about people who got their accounts hacked and the hackers try to get the user's account banned permanently. And no matter how much you try to explain to Sony that it wasn't your fault, uh, there's really nothing you can do and your account's pretty much gone forever. So, I mean, I'm hoping this new added security can protect us from any future hacks and I'm just hoping that we're not going to have any big attacks like back in 2011. But, you know, just have to wait and see what the future holds. Well, this is Delphonto XYZ, and until next time.